Thank you, Helene, and thank you for uh, the organizers for organizing a very stimulating day to intersect uh, three disciplines or integrate oncology, acupuncture, and fascia. I do think um, it is really important for us to get out of our comfort zone to really think out of the box in order to solve some of the problems that we are being confronted. At least in the area of oncology acupuncture, I think we are really at a really important time because we have some very promising preliminary data, but we also need large and definitive trials. And more importantly, like in the rest of the field of acupuncture, we're confronted with the sham acupuncture the placebo effect. So I hope to use my research to demonstrate some of the potentials for us to innovate in our trial design and to really eventually provide evidence to change the way we care for cancer patients. So I have no conflict interest to disclose, but uh, the research findings are supported by the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. However, it does not pre represent the views or opinions of the National Cancer Institute of Health. So I have to thank uh, Dr. Lu Wei Dong from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute uh, to provide this slide. It really demonstrates the field of integrative oncology acupuncture is an exciting, thriving field, has really been taking off since the early 2000s. So as any new scientific discipline, it takes time for the field to mature. So for those of you who are on the brink of entering a research career, this is a really exciting, the next 10 to 20 years are the time frame we're gonna really make an impact. So thank to the work of uh, Dr. Kay Casilla as well as Lorenzo Cohen's group for providing a really eloquent systematic review published in Journal of Clinical Oncology last year. So where you can see there's a clear evidence for acupuncture for chemo, nausea, chemo-related nausea, vomiting, but there are a number of areas as you heard this morning describing promising areas requ requiring well-designed, adequate powered studies to provide definitive evidence. Today, my focus is on talking about cancer pain. Specifically, I will talk about aromatase inhibitor-related arthralgia. So my area of research actually started with a patient I was introduced. Her name uh, is not real for the sake of uh, providing her privacy, but the rest is real. So she is a 61-year-old um, breast cancer survivor diagnosed with stage two breast cancer with ER positive tumor. After finished chemo, she was prescribed uh, Arimidex, a standard sort of hormonal treatment for postmenopausal women. So being on that drug for six months, she's complaining diffuse body aches, worse in her elbow. She's a very active tennis player and playing tennis means a lot, and not being able to play tennis makes her feel she is just being trapped in a very old body that she's trying to get out. She's like, I feel like it's just my mom. When I get out of the car, I have to just you know, push myself. So she's contemplating whether she should stop this life-saving drug. Just to put this uh, uh, story into context of statistics, we in two women on this drug has body ache we know as aromatase inhibitor arthralgia. About 30% of patients prematurely discontinue this drug. And premature discontinuation is associated with both disease-free and as well as overall survival. So as you can see, this is a really important symptom, not only affecting quality of life and functions, but almost threaten the survival of breast cancer patients. So at that time in 2007, uh, University of uh, Pennsylvania is extremely conservative. Her oncologist does not want her to try anything other than stopping the drug. <laughs> and uh, but her nurse practitioner was much more open, sent her secretly to me <laughs> to get acupuncture. <laughs> so thanks to the work of Brian Berman, Claudia Witt, at that time there's a good evidence for acupuncture for treating arthritis. So I told her I have no experience treating this condition but there's good evidence it may help arthritis. Let's give it a try. No, to behold, six uh, treatments later, her pain was completely gone, and she was able to resume her tennis. And about three years later, I'm doing a large NCI-funded uh, 
clinical uh, epi study on uh, genetic determines AI arthrology. My research assistant saw her. She's still on her AI and doing great. And, uh, but I want to give you a hint. This case actually stimulated this line of research for the last eight years. In 2007, when I surveyed breast cancer survivors at University of Pennsylvania, only 4% of them used acupuncture. But today, 17% of them have incorporated acupuncture in their care. So I think it's through careful research and integration, we can make a difference. So this study first started by a feasibility trial. It's a single arm trial. So I really want to emphasize doing phase one trial is really important. Unfortunately, in this field, a lot of the trials are designed by people who actually know very little about acupuncture. In the spirit of pursuing science, a lot of people say, let's just do it. Let's do it, find four points, let's go for it. And that's really bad because surgeon would never do a surgical intervention like that. Medication chemotherapists would never just run through some random drug, say, let's go for an RCT. You're bound to going to be finding a negative trial. So in this study, what I did is actually, I have conflict interest because I did the old interventions because nobody know what the symptom is. So as a Western trained physician, I evaluate a patient, apply to the TCM principle. I called my colleagues in China. I had two wonderful acupuncture friends, Lorna Lee, who is in the audience somewhere, as well as Adam Schreiber. And we really thought hard what are the symptoms from a Western perspective? What are the Eastern perspective? And we eventually develop a, a protocolized therapy. I really want to thank people like Rosa Snyder for really advocating for those kind of protocolized therapy. Really allow acupuncture to be done in a way you can reproduce the findings, but also reflect the principle of individualized treatment. So as a, this pilot, we found acupuncture is not only safe, but really produce a clinical meaningful effect size in reduction of a pain from about a five to a two, so that's about three point reduction, as well as in associated anxiety and fatigue. So that led to a NIH funded R21 trial on electroacupuncture for aromatase inhibitor related arthralgia. So the bottom line is uh, as a trial design, this is a phase two trial, we are limited in our sample size, so our primary aim is set to compare with electroacupuncture against usual care. And our secondary aim is to explore the potential effect size between the electroacupuncture and sham acupuncture. I also think it's really important, when you have a sample size of 20 to 20, it is unrealistic to expect anything active is gonna beat sham or placebo. That is true for drugs, that is true for acupuncture, that is probably true for all the interventions. Because the noise of daily life is just really big and unforgiven. If you design a small underpowered trial and set your hypothesis wrong, you're bound to have the wrong conclusions. So our interventions is everybody are educated with by joint pain and they inform to stay physically active, continue to stay uh, active medical care including receiving their pain medication. Again, this is what standard oncologists do. They probably don't actually go into depth to talk about all the physical activities. And we had two non-physician acupuncturists. This time, I removed myself from delivering the intervention, so I actually don't know the treatment assignment to maintain the sort of the blinding. And, uh, and with years of experience, Adam and Lorna, and uh, so they treat a patient twice a week for two weeks and uh, treat an additional six weeks. Our treatment is manualized protocol with a predominant treating joints, symptoms based on the B syndrome described in traditional Chinese medicine. But we also allowed adding additional points to target fatigue, uh, sleep issues, anxiety, depression, which are common in breast cancer survivors. And it's really important, I think, as we design trials in cancers, Patients don't come in with one symptom. They often come in with constellation of symptoms. Later on, we'll show you on those secondary outcomes. And we chose electroacupuncture. Part of it is there's an abundance of basic science literature suggests the specificity of the, in the neuroscience in acupuncture analgesia, mostly is based on electroacupuncture. Our outcome measure in, include validated uh, patient-reported outcome of joint pain, 
fatigue, sleep, anxiety, depression, and secondary outcome. Use a mixed effects model is a longitudinal analysis model adhering to the intent to treat principle. <laughs> So one of the most common questions I got asked by the oncologist as well as the patient, how do you blind? How do you mask the acupuncture? The patients I typically say, if I tell you, I have to kill you. So I never told the patient how I did it, at least the patient in my trial. But, um, but really, um, here's the example. On the, on the left panel, so base, oh, sorry. So basically, you can see the tip of the sham needle is very dull. It's actually not very dull because uh, the diameter is still very thin. But upon contacting the skin, the real needle just go through the sham needle, the, the top or retract into the body. This is the Streiberger device. So the problem with this, the sham needle, the tip is still sharp. So really providing a sensory stimulation that really classically not like physiologically inert. That's just a limitation. Bear that in mind. So we enrolled um, uh, close to 60 patients uh, in three arms. We made an effort to have a really good um, non-minority participation, almost 30% of patients. 60% of 66 received anastrozole or the remidex. No difference in baselines. As expected, um, you know, it's, there's no serious adverse events. There were 18 mild adverse events in 398 acupuncture treatments. Uh, most related to the, this needling sensation because it's blinded trial, so we couldn't really educate about what the chi is. So people just sometimes, oh, you know. So, so again, whether there's adverse events or not, but it's, it's part of the acupuncture delivery. So I have to say, when I first got the results, I was kind of depressed. Oh, it's just another trial showing real is different than sh no different than sham. But then, you know, after digesting the data a little bit more careful. I um, become more hopeful. So the blue line is the real electroacupuncture. The red line is the uh, usual care. So our primary analysis uh, found that electroacupuncture showed to have a, both a clinically important and statistical uh, uh, significant change with a Cohen's D of 0.76, that meaning a moderate effect size. So in general, and also if you look at ab absolute uh, pain point joint is two. So in a recent meta-analysis on all psychosocial education or drug therapy for cancer pain, rarely any intervention compared to usual care actually can reach to a two-point reduction in cancer pain. So you can say electroacupuncture from this perspective is effective. But during the active intervention, actually, there's no separation between real electroacupuncture and sham. But what the difference is, is really like at the end, after two weeks without acupuncture, the real uh, acupuncture group continued to improve. The sham started to regress. So this is actually even more clear for pain interference. This is a domain measuring how pain affecting their quality of life, function, sleep, uh, so on and so forth. You can see a small but a definitive separation over time. And uh, we, if we power based on this difference, we need about 120 to 150 people in each arm. So we will need like somewhere between 250 to 300. So the caveat is I wrote a grant to NCI, got really great review, five percentile on the first submission. But eventually NCI decided not to fund it because this is an acupuncture study, it's too expensive. So I find myself in a quandary. I really want to do the science to advance our field, but our funder doesn't necessarily view this as a priority area. I can understand the resource is very scarce. So how do we really move this field forward? So I was literally very depressed for a while, but I'm hopeful. And here I want to show you why I'm hopeful. So this is the first part I'm hopeful, <laughs> is you can actually see a much more clear separation in the secondary outcomes, in fatigue, in sleep, in anxiety, with the exception in depression, where uh, electroacupuncture and the sham acupuncture almost produce similar benefit. But for all the other secondary outcomes, there is actually bigger separation. So one could argue maybe acupuncture really where it wins is to treating the whole person. So again, you know, I'm still in the recovering phase from not getting funded, so. 
I am thinking about how to write my next grant to get funded. But I, I have to say I'm a hopeful person. So instead of getting depressed about not getting funded, so I applied a grant to PCORI to study our sleep outcome. Thank goodness I got first funded a PCORI Integrated Oncology trial compare acupuncture versus cognitive behavior therapy for insomnia. So at least I feel some signs of advance. <laughs> So for those of you who know uh, and want to do research, you have to be persistent because this is a field only for the person who wants to survive. <laughs> and um, so one of the things that always intrigued me and probably many people here in the audience is why is there such a powerful effect? So expectation has been hypothesized as a key ingredient in this so-called placebo effect. So we used the data from this trial to ask two questions. The first one is, does baseline expectation predict outcomes in acupuncture patients, right? If you expect more, would you get more? The second question is, does the treatment effect change your expectation? That means if I give you something good, will you love acupuncture a little bit more at the end? So let's see what we find. So we, um, as a fellow, I had nothing to do except for developing a scale measuring expectation because there's really no instrument to measure that. If you don't have an instrument, how do you study? So this instrument was already, uh, originally I developed in Chinese in China and then translate into English and thank to my co good colleague, now is in Korean. And uh, so, so it's only four items, really simple, you can use in research and clinical context. And the, currently, a number of clinical trials are incorporating this measure in addition to mine. And the, the outcomes, we use a really standard way to qualify responders, brief pain inventory, as well as using clinical global impression of change, meaning people reporting their joint pain much improved, or very much improved after course of therapy. So here are the results. Let's first look at SHAM. So on the horizontal bar is really the, pers uh, the, the baseline expectation, the lowest is six, because people, if they had below six, they didn't join the trial. The top one is 20. And the vertical bar is percent pain reduction at the end. So with every incremental increase in expectation, there's every one incremental improvement in joint pain. So as you can see, the expectation really worked for people in the sham acupuncture group. So what is in the real acupuncture group? That's what we find. I have to say, I actually, as a clinician, I always thought people, if they expect, they may do better. But what we actually found that the real electroacupuncture had no influence on the pain outcome. And in conventional pain research, we consider 30% of more reduction in pain is a clinical important change. So one way to interpret this is electroacupuncture provide a consistent benefit for patients regardless whether you expect acupuncture work or not, versus sham acupuncture really work for people who believe it. Another way to look at this data is, so I validate this uh, instrument in breast cancer outpatient patients. In my validation cohort, the mean expectation is about 9.8. Who are in my trials? The mean trial mean at baseline is 14.2. So this is a critical issue in clinical trial in all therapies, whether it's drug or acupuncture. Motivated people participate in trials. Like they are not your typical patients are dragged in by their spouse or at last resort, just want to be curious about whether this work to do. So as you can see in the real population level, if you give Shen, you produce almost no benefit. If you do real, you probably have 40. But also it does raise a question. If you have patient come in with very high expectation, literally doc, I mean, I have those patients, like I think acupuncture is the best thing. I'm going to work, it's going to work for me. In that context, maybe providing very gentle stimulation is all you need. So next, let's take a look what happens with expectation. This is in the sham group. So the people who we are considered responders in the sham group, they came in with high expectation, they left with high expectation, compared with people who did not respond. 
So really, there's a, really a responder status significance. So really, doing acupuncture did not, ch doing sham acupuncture did not change the expectation. But that pattern is very different to electroacupuncture. What we actually found is they came in with the same set of expectation, but as the intervention goes, the responder gradually increased the expectation, the non-responder gradually decreased their expectation. So what this really tells me is there's something really interesting going on. It almost like this is a classical conditioning. It's like your body has to respond, and then your mind starts changing in electroacupuncture. So here's that's what I'm proposing. Certainly, we have a lot of brighter people like Natalie, Richard here. I think maybe electroacupuncture is a body-mind therapy. The body has to respond to the treatment. The mind starts changing. And versus the sham acupuncture could be really a mind-body therapy. You come in expecting it to work, eventually it works for you. So this lets to, is it possible there are different ways? Because as acupuncturists, we know there are different ways we stimulate the needle. Somebody, some people we really stimulate very minimal, like in the Japanese needling, or there are some people we definitely don't respond to anything but electrical stimulation. So I think uh, there is a great potential for personalized acupuncture treatment. So this slide, I think many people have seen, this is uh, by uh, a biostatistician at Memorial Sloan Kettering, Andrew Vickers, shows in a meta-analysis in non-cancer patient, acupuncture produced both specific needling effect and overall effect. So the specific needling is only about half of the effect size, and the rest is the process effect. So one thing as an acupuncture practitioner, I think we all recognize acupuncture is not just science, it's a healing art. So what I would consider as the specific needling effect is the science, the process of acupuncture, that carrying delivery of that process is the art. So I would really challenge us as we research acupuncture, we don't lose the art of acupuncture. Because if you lose it, we lose the soul of acupuncture. So I think as we design our trials, we shouldn't just always try to control away. Maybe there are other design methods we should actually embrace it, to enhance it, to really improve this overall acupuncture effects. Let's get into a little bit more about this placebo effect. After this study just published this month in Journal of Clinical Oncology, it's not about pain, it's actually about half flash. So we randomized 120 breast cancer survivors with half flash in four groups. So this deep green, uh, this green is real electroacupuncture. The blue is placebo acupuncture. And red is real gabapentin. And uh, the pink is placebo pills. We actually found at the end of four, eight weeks of intervention, the electroacupuncture has the best effects followed by sham acupuncture, gabapentin, and placebo pill. And there's a statistical difference between the, gap, uh, the placebo acupuncture and the placebo pill, highlighting this art of acupuncture delivery generate a much more stronger effect than just taking a pill in its sort of placebo form. And what is even more provocative is the long-term follow-up. Electro, this is after stopping acupuncture or pill for four months. The electroacupuncture group continue to have a marked improvement followed by sham acupuncture and placebo pill, then the gabapentin group, their effects just went back to baseline. So over long-term acupuncture actually was better than gabapentin. So also people, the biggest critic about placebo effect is, well, acupuncture is all placebo. I would argue, so what? <laughs> if the effects is drastic short-term, Thank you. You guys are a great audience. I don't, typically don't get plus. And uh, also, if the effect persists without the treatment, wouldn't a patient love that? Does a patient want to take a pill for the rest of her life? I have yet to have a patient say that. So I think, really, also, if we look at the, the side effects, GABA-pendant group 39.3, sham uh, pill group, placebo pill 20%, Electroacupuncture, 16%, a sham acupuncture, 
Also, there's a statistic different, like placebo pill generated more nocebo effects than sham acupuncture group. And here are some of the side effects. So one could argue if acupuncture is a therapy with more benefit and less side effect, I don't think it takes a genius for a patient to say, maybe that's something I want to try. <laughs> so I want to summarize that there may be different types of needling stimulation producing different effects for different patients. As the field moves forward, we shouldn't just think about sham. We actually should do studies help acupuncturists to do acupuncture. Because I feel like I've read a lot of papers. Rarely they really tell me how to become a better acupuncture. They typically just try to show to the conventional world acupuncture work. But I think there's a lot more to be done to understand how do we do acupuncture better for our patients, including how do we enhance that patient-doctor relationship to deliver our intervention. Second is acupuncture may target pain-related symptom clusters. Wouldn't be nice we have one intervention targeting multiple symptoms, so the cancer patient does not need to see a psychotherapist, see an acupuncture, see a rehab doctor, see everybody in the world because they have a live life to live. And the third is, compared to active drugs, acupuncture may have more sustained effects with fewer negative side effects. As much as I'm enthusiastic about my results, I have to be very realistic. Our trials is still small sample size. Until somebody wants to fund it, we have to ask for a larger trial. But if they do fund it, I'll ask you to do long-term follow-up because our gain may be in the long term. And uh, also innovative trial design and comparative effectiveness research is really needed to move this field forward. So here's my theoretical model. As cancer diagnosis and treatment brought on, a lot of symptoms are common to our patients. We need to do research to better understand what are the etiology, mechanism, and risk factors that produce those symptoms and use acupuncture to target those symptoms specifically. As a result, we can potentially improve the adherence to cancer treatment and improve quality of life and survival for cancer patients. So I want to use the last minute or so to really welcome any of you who want to join in hand to really make acupuncture part of a standard cancer care. We have to do this together from a clinical integration, innovation perspective, research, and education. And our SIO is such an organization that our next year's meeting is in Miami. The goal is advancing global impact of integrated oncology. And I hope to see many of you there. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Sorry, I apologize. I'm actually leaving you Penn to go to Memorial Sloan Kettering, so I don't have cards with my new information. If you have questions about research or measures, please email me. Thank you.